Hey folks, Greg here from Pilot Institute, and today I want to talk about a topic that's a little bit confusing, which is ADSB. And if you've never heard these uh, letters before, then in this video I'm going to talk about what ADSB is, how does it apply in aviation, is this something that we should be wondering about for our drones, this is a drone UAS specific video, and then we'll talk about maybe you have ADSB on your drone and you don't know what it means, or is it something that you should be looking for when you purchase your drone. So, Let's get to it. All right, ADSB, these four letters, Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. That tells you everything, right? Well, no, it doesn't. What does it mean? It's basically a device that is on board of an aircraft that is going to broadcast, that is going to send the location, the altitude, and the speed of an aircraft to, well, to other people, either a ground receiver or to another aircraft that's up in the air. The reason that this is put in place in manned aviation, this is specifically for manned aviation, is to help other traffic in the area be aware of what is going on. Now, as a manned aircraft pilot, I remember when ADSB kind of became a thing from the concept all the way to implementation. The FAA uh, in 2020 made ADSB a requirement for certain aircraft, and we'll talk about that in the video. And uh, this became kind of a big thing. This became kind of a big safety thing for everyone to be able to see where everybody else is. When I started my flight training, you were sitting in the aircraft and what you had to do is you had to scan around the cockpit to look for other aircraft and sometimes you could get in trouble and not see somebody coming in. This is designed to help prevent these situations. They're designed to help prevent what we call mid-air collision. And, and this is a good thing. This is a really good thing. That data is being submitted every single second. So you get an update on somebody's position every second. Now, there's four different scenarios that we need to understand. And I know at the moment you're probably looking at this and like, what does this have to do with UAS? Bear with me, it does. Eventually there will be a correlation and something that you can use to fly safely. But if we look at ADSB, one of the concepts of how it works is we have an aircraft that is going to be sending the signal on what's called ADSB out. It's sending the signal to somebody else. And on the other side, we have an aircraft that is going to receive the signal ADSB in coming in into the cockpit. And if we see that aircraft that's here on the top left of the screen, what you have is on their display, they're going to be able to see the location of the aircraft that is sending their signal on ADSB out. So ADSB out sends the signals to everybody else, ADSB in, we're receiving the signal and displaying it for the pilot to see. Another way that we can make this work is with ADSB out, that information can be sent to a ground receiver. It's an ADSB receiver, and what that receiver on the ground is going to do is it's going to broadcast the signal to everybody else in the area. And this is kind of an important concept as well because um, maybe there is a control tower right here that can get that information as well and display it on their radar. Another way that we can do this is some aircraft don't have ADSB available on board, but they have what's called a transponder. ADSB and transponder are two different things. ADSB is an addition to the transponder. Most aircraft that are flying out there have a transponder. And what it is, it's sending a four digit code that has altitude and the direction and the speed of the aircraft uh, into, this, uh, into this code so that a radar on the ground can pick up that signal. You're basically sending a four digit uh, code, the radar looks at it and say, oh, this is where 1234 is located. And then that information can also be converted into an ADSB signal that can then be sent to an ADSB receiver. So that's the third way of doing things. Not many aircraft don't have ADSB, but it is possible. It is possible. Okay. And then the last thing that we have is number four, which is where an aircraft doesn't have ADSB, but also does not have a transponder. This is pretty rare, but it does happen. And in this case, the only thing the radar can pick is the location of the aircraft. It's a 2D thing. What altitude is it at? Nobody knows. At least the, trans the, the radar doesn't know. And so in this case, what we have is we have that information that is being sent to, well, really nowhere. This doesn't convert into ADSB information. And again, there's a reason why I mention all of this is because this has an implication down the line for, uh, for, for UAS. So if somebody doesn't have ADSB, they don't have a transponder, well, you'll never be able to see where they are in space. 
So the difference between ADS-B in and ADS-B out is pretty simple. ADS-B out is a broadcast signal. We're sending the location of the aircraft. ADS-B in is a receiver that receives the ADS-B out signal and then displays it in the cockpit to the pilot. ADS-B in is optional. ADS-B out is something that is mandatory in most of the airspace. Most of the airspace, but not all of it. Okay? So, do all aircraft have to have ADS-B? And the answer is no. There are some exceptions. Exceptions such as aircraft that are not going to be flying in a specific list of airspace. We'll talk about it in a second. Government aircraft, military aircraft don't have to have ADS-B. So, you can't rely, this is kind of the, the bottom line here, you can rely on ADS-B to know that there's for a fact going to be an aircraft out there. If I'm flying in an actual airplane and I look at my little screen and I say, oh, there's nobody on the screen, everything is good to go, I don't have to look outside. Well, that's false. That's false. We need to be paying attention because there's going to be other aircraft in the area. So, so who's required to have ADS-B out, at least sending the signal? Everyone flying in Class Alpha, Class Alpha airspace, very, very high up, 18,000 feet. If you're in Class Bravo airspace, from the surface all the way to 10,000 feet MSL, that's going to be required, and that includes the airspace that extends in the uh, beyond the mode Sivel and uh, up to 10,000 feet. So Class B, up to 10,000 feet, you got to be in there. Class C airspace, from the surface all the way to 4,000, that has to be done. You have to have ADS-B out. Class E airspace, above 10,000 feet in the US, you have to have that, excluding that section that is 2,500 feet above the ground. Don't really get too confused about all these details. This is it, really. This is all you really have to worry about. This is where our aircraft are going to be having ADS-B out required. So if you're flying your drone in this case, then um, if you're in one of those areas, then chances are it's going to be required for them to have that. Class B airspace, you might be flying in there. Class D airspace, you might be flying in there. But remember, anywhere else in the country, which is class golf, which is where you're going to likely be flying most of the time, ADS-B is not required, is not required, okay? So other exceptions to the rule right here, where ADS-B is not required, crop spraying, right? This is where aircraft are going to be flying pretty close to the ground. Emergency response, helicopter tours, news coverage, Search and rescue, all of these are not required to have ADS-B out and sending that signal. So something to keep in mind as you fly your drone. Now let's talk about drones. Do drones have to have ADS-B in order to fly? And can they use the ADS-B signal? Drones can only use ADS-B in. They can only receive the signal that is being sent by other aircraft. As a matter of fact, the FAA very specifically prohibits the use of ADS-B out in uh, 14 CFR part 107.53. The reason is, if we start sending this signal all over the place, we're going to be congesting this ADS-B system. And it's not designed to have too many, or it's not designed to have that many targets within that small area. That's why we are not allowed to use ADS-B out. We're not allowed to send our position using ADS-B. So that's the reason why. But we are allowed to receive from other aircraft. And this is something that some manufacturers actually do, and we'll talk about that in a second. The next question that we may have is, is remote ID the same as ADS-B? And the answer is no, although remote ID that the FAA is putting in place uh, in, uh, in 2023, remote ID is a sort of remote identification, very much like ADS-B, but we don't use ground stations at the moment. Everything is going to be sent locally. So if you remember that first example I gave you, remote ID is going to look kind of like that, where the drone is sending a signal to other people and other drones in the area, and that's it. So not the same, different technology, but somewhat of the same purpose to be able to identify aircraft in the same area. You may ask, should I buy a drone that has ADS-B in? And the answer is yes. More than likely, this is a feature that you should be looking for. Is it going to be a 100% selling point if you have a drone that has ADS-B in and you have one that doesn't? I don't know. I don't, this is your decision to make, but this is a great technology to have on your drone. Both DJI and Hotel 
have ADS-B receivers on some of their drones. Hotel has just started doing this with the Hotel Evo Enterprise, and I think they're talking about adding this to drones in the future. DJI has vouched to put ADS-B receivers in all of their drones above 250 grams. So all the drones that we've seen coming out recently all have ADS-B in coming in. DJI calls it AirSense technology. I don't know that Hotel has a specific name for it, but if you're looking for something and you see AirSense, that's what it is. It's the ADS-B coming in. Okay. Well, this is it. This is it. I, I just wanted to make a quick presentation because I know there's a lot of confusion about ADS-B and what it is. What we're going to do is we're going to put a link down. We wrote a beautiful blog uh, presentation on all of this information. And if you want to see it in written format, just click on that blog right here and then you'll get more information. If you have additional questions, leave them down here. I'm always happy to answer them. Um, like, subscribe, do everything else that you do, and I'll see you guys for the next video.